All right, what's going on everybody? So today I'm reviewing the artist that I can't believe I haven't before now. I think I took a look at some early comic books, but I've never actually looked at his artwork. I don't think I've ever actually done this and just looked at like a slew of his artwork at one time. But anyways, I'm looking at this guy right here. This would be Mr. Cybot himself, a co-creator of Mortal Kombat and comic book artist as well. He actually did the cover for the Mortal Kombat vs. DC comic, I believe. So, let's get started. And we already have a comic book cover, though I'm not really sure. And for those who have never seen me do this before, I just grab random photos online just to Google search and I grab as much artwork that I think may be the person's at one time as I can. Sometimes that leads to me grabbing an occasional photo that doesn't belong to the artist, so I have to be careful with that. This might be one of those instances, I'm not sure. It looks like it's his, at least some of his comic book style, but I don't know. So yeah, I honestly don't know if he did this or not. Though I will say it looks phenomenal. Um, The only thing about this that bothers me I can zoom in. Liu Kang's this this mullet look. I know I know it's the 90s, but even then, like mullets are out of style. Like, why does Liu Kang have that's like, a serious mullet too? Like, I uh, I guess it's like Liu uh Bruce Lee had a bowl cut, so we're not gonna do that with Liu Kang. We'll give him a mullet instead. Okay, now this is actual Tobias art. I think this is a katana sketch from Mortal Kombat 3. It's amazing. She pretty much looks like this in game. Right, like, that's incredible. It, call me crazy. If anyone knows the answer, please let me know. But I thought when the original Mortal Kombat games were made, they just grabbed pieces of costumes and stuff out of like stores or wardrobe that they could find and they like pieced an outfit together and that's how they came up with the costume. I'm actually surprised that like they sketched out the costumes and then got them made. Which this is Mortal Kombat 3, so maybe at this point they had the money to do all of that, but that's interesting because this is a very intricate design and they had this costume for the woman that was playing all the female ninjas in the game. Because I assume that this outfit was, uh, this sketch was also applied to Jade and Melina just in like a burgundy and green form. What color would Melina technically be? Like burgundy, purple? I don't know. But yeah, I like this picture. I also love how it's a very womanly photo of Katana, but she's freaking jacked. Like look at these arms. <laughs> Like the detail in her arms is crazy. All right, now I think I've seen this photo about a million times. I think this has been shown in like videos and everything else. I apologize, by the way, there are trash trucks going up and down my street. So if you can just hear a bunch of screeching and whatnot, those are the brakes on the trash trucks, I'm assuming. And it's loud as hell. So I hope it's not being picked up on the mic. Anyways, uh, yeah, I love this outfit. I don't like it more than Kung Lao's MK2 design, but I still like it nonetheless. Those boots are sick too, by the way. I've never noticed Kung Lao's boots before, which why would you? I mean, <laughs> but this is pretty awesome. And once again, it's pretty close to the actual design in the game. So I think at this point, they may have had actual costume designers to do. There's even details like the insignia and stuff on his outfit. Most of this stuff is in the game, so I think they had actual wardrobe people at this point to where they could just recreate Tobias' sketches. I also love like the old school like American comic book style that he had with his artwork. And I say old school, this was drawn in like 1994, but anyways. Oh, and Cyrax. Okay, hold up. Bulky design, but it's a robot, so it makes perfect sense. I love this. I love Cyrax, Sector, and Smoke's character design. Yeah, I don't even have words. Uh, this would be Mustard, I'm assuming. The red one would be Ketchup. I don't believe I have a Smoke and a Sector one, which I imagine somebody would have. It'd probably just be somebody changing the colors. They're all the exact same design. I love that too, by the way. It could just design one character and just split the color numerous times and just go on about their merry way. He wouldn't have to just redraw each ninja or each cyber ninja each time. But yeah, sweet design. I also love the detail. Did he color this? You can sort of tell that it's pencil shaded and whatnot, especially in like his arm and the real black areas on his clothes. But like the metal parts, like his belt and on his gloves and stuff, that is crazy detail. And even how he has the shine in certain areas, like towards the corners, and then there's the actual shadows coming within, and then the closer you get to the center where the specular highlight is, it's light. 
Like, that's sweet. I wonder, did he even do that with the pencil or how did he do that? That looks amazing, though. It's just cool. Even the level of details in the dreads. Like, I say this in every video, but I'm trying to get in the habit of thinking along the lines of how much detail can I get in the entire picture that I draw personally when I draw my own artwork. Because I get in the lazy, or at least I used to be in the lazy mindset of, okay, this is small, so draw whatever it is and then move on to the details of like the bigger items and stuff. But it's like the smaller, those small little details matter so much. And it's like getting as much as you can in each like piece of the picture matters so much. Ah, well, this isn't from John Tobias, though it actually looks like an original Johnny Cage piece of artwork. I mean, Johnny Cage, John Tobias, but this is not Tobias's work. I was about to say who would go through the trouble of drawing, because it looks like Tobias' sketches, by the way, for the record, but it's not him. It's, I can't pronounce it. Jose, yeah, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. It's down at the bottom of the screen. I'm probably blocking it, but um, I was going to say who would go through the trouble of drawing, like replicating Tobias' artwork and then writing the, his whole character bio and everything on the page, but it's like I used to do that when I was a kid. Like, I remember being 9 or 10 years old looking like in tech and instruction manuals are doing the exact same thing on certain characters, so. Ah, Prince Goro. Now, this is an actual Tobias sketch. Interesting original design of Goro's face. Very fat face. This almost looks like, um, God, I don't know what they're called, but like the evil Buddha statues that they had in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance and like the acid bath. It sort of looks like that, just the face of it. Oh man, I never noticed these sketches. Goro has a tail. Not that trash truck is crazy. Anyways, um, I've never paid attention to fact. Well, okay, Goro doesn't have a tail. I imagine that would be practical, considering that Goro was originally claymation. But yeah, Goro having a tail is crazy. That would be overkill, though. He already has four arms. Does he really need a tail added on everything else? And you can tell he's trying to figure out, like, the design of the character as well. Because, like, the face... The, and maybe it's just because it's a little more shaded at the top. But this face and these down here aren't as detailed as this one over on the side up here. This one looks like Goro. Yeah, this one legit looks like Goro. Well, awesome concept design. It's still crazy that that was like a stop motion. I don't know, was it claymation or how did they do Goro? Okay, some non Mortal Kombat related art. I actually saw him post this on Twitter. I don't know what was the name of this game, Total Carnage. So I don't even know if somebody even has this arcade or not. Um, The, the way the character looks here almost looks like some, just the hat is reminding me of M. Bison. But yeah, I don't know what this game is, what it's about, or what's going on here, but the interesting sketch. It looks like it should have been like the villain in a 90s cartoon or something. It's like he should have been in the tick or something. Okay, this is some original artwork that he did later. This might have been for Mortal Kombat versus DC. Technology's come a long way. You can tell this wasn't solely done with a pencil or pen. Um, so it looks very digital very clean line art but uh that Shang Tsung and the Tarkatans I imagine none of those are Baraka in the background it's a badass pose of Shang Tsung though if I do say so myself I don't know why Shang Tsung looks so heroic but consider how evil he is but whatever it looks cool Shang Tsung sort of always has a pretty like cool character design and stuff anyways I even like old Shang Tsung I may be in the minority for that one but Always thought Shang Tsung's designs were sweet. Ah, here we go. Now we're talking. So I think this was for Sub-Zero Mythologies. It says this was drawn March 11th, 1996. Just reminding me of how old I'm getting. But um, man, this looks amazing. For the record, this would be Bihan, by the way, not Kuao Yang. Um, this would be OG Sub-Zero. I don't, okay, I'm glad I even have this picture. Because I used to draw this as a kid just because this was how I always saw Sub-Zero. But I don't know what the points are on the the panther-like design on, or the, 
a Batman or Black Panther S design on the hood of the ninja outfit. I've never understood that. And why they pick and choose to this day in Mortal Kombat when they want to show that off and when they don't. Like, I don't get what that's supposed to be, but it looks cool, but I just, I don't. It's like I like it and I don't at the same time. I don't know how I feel about that, but whatever. It's Sub-Zero, so I, I just, I love this entire design. Like, it just looks cool. The pose and everything. Once again, I talked about my last video, the illusion of great anatomy if you have the waist and arms, or uh, the waist and elbows lined up. And right where the waist tapers in, it's right in line with the elbows. And it's like, I don't think that Sub-Zero looks anatomically correct here, but it's still badass and it looks perfect. Just because the things that the, the eye has to catch on to, to make everything make sense in your own mind and look symmetrical, Tobias nailed it here. Like, it's perfect. So I'm starting to learn more and more how important that actually is. This is awesome. And this is John Tobias's art from 1992. So this is very original Mortal Kombat artwork. I actually did my own tribute for the original Mortal Kombat game. I want to say in 2016. Um, it's a whole thing on my as a video of it somewhere on my YouTube channel back when I wasn't putting my face or voice on any of my videos. Uh, but I, it still should be up there somewhere. I drew each individual character on the Mortal Kombat pit. It just reminded me of it just looking at this. And it took me a while to draw and I did it digitally. So I can't imagine how long this took with what looks like to be a marker and pencil. And probably pen, I assume. This looks amazing, but just design issues. And this is not fair of me to judge 30 years later, but the mullet, like I can't get over Liu Kang and this freaking mullet. And then what is with the points on the hoods? Like I can't, I don't know what those are supposed to be. And I don't know how I feel about it. Like I said, it looks cool. And at the same time, I don't, like, I don't know. My least favorite Sonya design, by the way, I love his redesign of Switch. They had to work with what they had in 1992, but his redesign of Sonya for Mortal Kombat 3, I thought was amazing. It looked so much better. But just taste this things moved on and they had like the freedom to not have to worry about having the clothes to make these costumes and stuff and they could just do what they want. Obviously everything just got better. That and Tobias was just able to push more of his ideas as they got deeper and deeper and Mortal Kombat got bigger and bigger. What? is this is this is i believe this is uh ah uh, i can't remember it i don't know if tobias did this actual piece of art or not but he is responsible for the design if i'm not mistaken i think this is from his fighting game the first fighting game that he worked on after he left the mortal Kombat team and i think 2000 why can i not remember the game Tao Fang. Yeah, I think this is the main character from that game. A game that I honestly like, to be quite honest. Um, it's not the greatest fighting game in the world, but I thought it was cool. And they sort of had the play with like the different fighting styles and stuff kind of before Mortal Kombat did it. So I don't know if that was an idea that was being tossed around for future Mortal Kombat games before Tobias left or how that worked, but whatever. But yeah, this was the first game Tobias worked on after working on the abomination that was Mortal Kombat Special Forces. Cool design though, this looks sweet. Like this looks like this should be the main character of something. Like I don't know, even without context, just looking at it, like it's pretty badass design. Ah, Kentaro, these feet, what is going on here? Why does he have two toes? Why does he have two toes? I think the reason why I'm so taken aback by this is this massive giant character and then these tiny little feet with two toes. Like, how is he able to stand? Which I guess he doesn't stand. He's stomping on people, but still, like, how is his body supported? Well, never mind. These giant legs and whatnot. These arms are massive. Like, Kentaro is huge. This actually looks more intimidating than him in the game. And then the level of details in the spikes. There's a lot of spikes drawn in this image. And it looks like he drew almost each individual spike that's being shown here. Once again, I may be in the minority for this, but I like, I love Goro more than Kentaro, 
but I think I love Kentaro's design more. I don't really know why. I hate fighting against them though in the games, but I do love the design more. Ah, oh, Fujin. And I think this is uh, Mythology's Fujin, because there's a cape. That ridiculous boss battle, where if you don't know what to do after you beat Fujin, you automatically die. It's the most frustrating thing. Um, that game is so ridiculously hard for no reason, but we're not here to talk about that. Sweet cape design, by the way. Yeah, I always thought Fujin was a cool character. It's interesting now that they've retconned Fujin to be Raiden's brother. Never knew that in all my years playing Mortal Kombat and reading and studying about the story in the games, but interesting using a hint of blue for the highlight of the cape in certain areas on him. Considering he did this with a pencil too, I would have never, well, now I think I would think to do something like this, but like drawing with pencils and whatnot, it would have never occurred to me to do this at any point. So it's interesting to see, once again, the detail and the sort of metallic looking parts of the clothing is just amazing to me. Ah, a character I wish they would stick in the games. The interesting backstory that's never been explored, but got a Serena design. And it's from Mortal Kombat uh, Mythologies. It would have to be because this is uh, John Tobias's artwork and she's appeared in no other games outside of like Armageddon. But she has a pretty cool design and she's the, just a very dark looking character. She looks like she should be evil, but she's not. Yeah, I always loved her design and backstory, especially like her attachment to Quan Chi. And even her design sort of looks like she should be affiliated with Quan Chi, even the paint on the face and everything. And then like the single white streak, almost like Rogue and X-Men, like this is a badass design. I'm starting to know Tobias loves drawing his women with the most jacked arms you will ever see in your life. This isn't on the level of the Katana one we saw earlier, but it's, ah, speak it of the devil. I said this was an advert for Katana. I think I've drawn this picture on this channel before. Oh, I've drawn a similar one. I use so much stuff as a reference, but I believe I have drawn an image similar to this of Katana at one point. Wow, sweet design. Very blue. There's no complaints here. If you don't know, blue's my favorite color. You could probably tell by the background of the room. Oh my god, what is going on with the zoom? Okay, I know this is a Tobias sketch. I've seen this one shown in different videos over the years. It says Lin Kuei Ninja. Lin Kuei slash Ninja. So this was basically Scorpion and Sub-Zero. It'd be awesome if in the original Mortal Kombat games they used the swords too, but I know that's impractical for how they made the games. The actual identity of this warrior is unknown. However, based on the markings of his uniform, it is believed he belongs to the Lin Kuei, a legendary clan of Chinese ninja. This is the original sketch for Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Just to take an agenda of this. The sword's missing, the bands on the, the mask and whatnot is gone, the little insignia is gone, and other than that, this is pretty much it in the games. It's pretty much it. I mean, this is just a sketch, so obviously he just drew a ninja. But considering how simplistic Scorpion and Sub-Zero were in the first game, still kind of close. Ah, oh, Rain. This looks awesome. For the record, once again, the actual uh, image name is saying Ermac. So this could have been a red image that was changed to purple. But it wouldn't matter anyways because all of the ninjas is just a change in color anyway, so... So I find this could have been blues, could have been yellow, could have been green. Once again, material change on the purple parts of the outfit. Actually, I kind of can't tell if this is purple or if it's gray. And I don't know if that's my monitor or my eyes. I think it is purple, but I really don't know. This could be smoke, this could be rain. I'm just going to assume rain because it's way too strong of a hint of purple here. But awesome design. Now this, this for the hood and mask this is my design i like this the ones with the points like the bat ears or the panther i don't know what that is but this right here this is my look for the mk ninja these are interesting mortal kombat sketches that i've never seen before so okay learning something right now so what is his name roku Ro? 
Sir belongs to a race of demon warriors called the Rokuro Kubi or Kubai. Reputed to be savage barbarians, Rokuro will use this misrepresentation against his opponents. He will use the tournament to restore the pride and respect of his race. So what did this character end up becoming Goro in some way, shape, or form? They just added multiple arms. Kinda looks Goro-ish, just a regular humanoid form. Yeah, interesting design. Would have loved to have seen what that looked like in the game. Oh my god, and this is Liu Kang? What is this guy? Once a member of the super secret White Lotus Society, Liu Kang left the organization in order to represent all Shaolin temples in the tournament. Kang is strong in his beliefs and despises Shang Lao, not Shang Tsung. So apparently Kung Lao and Shang Tsung was just a thing. Uh, he competes only for the chance to expose the true nature of the contest. Wow, they were straight up into the Shaolin monk aspect of Liu Kang. He looks completely like a monk. There's nothing else to this character. Bald monk outfit, the studded little wristbands, like that's, that's plain and regular. I'm glad he went to, I guess these are just early sketches and him just getting ideas out. We all do it. Boy, am I glad that he pushed that Liu Kang design further. Because considering it is just the Shaolin Monk, in theory, he could have just left it here, but he chose not to. Interesting Quan Chi design. This almost looks closer to what he looked like in uh, Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, which I believe is now on HBO Max. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. Which I got them on DVD years ago. Um... And I will occasionally watch it because I'm a giant man-child. But Quan Chi's first appearance in all of Mortal Kombat was actually on that cartoon. Little known fact. I like how he just had like a, a long sleeve or a giant sleeved shirt thing. I guess they just said this is impractical later on and just went, okay, we'll just make it a sweater. <laughs> you just make it a sweater under this giant whatever this thing is that shoulder pad spike thing that he wears over time. I don't know. I can't describe Quan Chi's outfit. It just looks awesome. Highly detailed, by the way. Oh my God, even got the amulet, which is like the most important object in all of Mortal Kombat history. Yeah, awesome character design. Which, Quan Chi is just a great character from the design, the story, the look, everything. Awesome. Okay. Um, we have two images sort of merged into one here. So, the early sketch of Raiden pretty much just spot on to Raiden. Like Raiden damn near looks exactly like this in the game. There's actually outside of the the staff and the hat, he's pretty spot on to what became Shang Tsung. And I love the name Shang Tsung, including the spelling to start the word Sung off with a T, which is probably how the name itself is actually spelled. It's not like they made it up. I don't think. Could be wrong. But yeah, Shang Tsung and Quan Chi, the Deadly Alliance, they're two of the greatest villain character designs in MK history. Right behind Shao Kahn, understand that he's the GOAT, but still. Ah, and we have a Scorpion design, which looks strikingly similar to the Rain one that we saw earlier. There's some differences, but I think it may be the exact same design, just colored uh, yellow instead of purple or gray or whatever that one was earlier. Oh my God, OG Jackson Sonya sketches. Wow. Oh, I'm sitting there thinking like, what, did he leave like the the sketch lines that he was drawing for Jax in the picture? No, it's the metal arms. I'm loopy, I don't know what I was just thinking there, but yeah. I like this, I honestly would have liked to see this one colored. But this looks pretty cool. I actually, Sonya's never appeared like this. To my knowledge, Sonya has never appeared like this in the games. I don't know. I just wish like this specific looking Sonya would have been in the game and not the ponytailed one. But once again, practicality, maybe they just went. Or maybe, oh God, is this for special forces? You know what? I'm not even going to entertain that thought. Let's just move on. Okay. Earlier, I talked about how much I love Shang Tsung's character designs. This may be my least favorite one. I don't like this Shang Tsung. Tobias's original Shang Tsung designs I'm a fan of, except for MK2 and 3. 
I don't like this design at all. The the painted eyes, the stupid goatee, the eye, yeah. A decent drawing. I'm just not a fan of this looking Shang Tsung. Like I said, the old man Shang Tsung that we looked at earlier is really cool. But I don't know why this is just so off to me for young Shang Tsung. Okay. It's a sketch behind Jax for some reason. Um, I'm thinking maybe it's to get the details of behind him with the metal arms. I'm assuming. I could be wrong. It looks nice enough. Showing how the two arms are, or the two metal arms are connected behind his back. It's interesting this weird piece is going straight up to the back of his neck though. I don't know what that's about. Ah, Sindel. Another amazing design character. The long hair design and everything else. Like, I don't know. I like Sindel's design from MK3. I'm trying to think now, I think that Shang Tsung one might be the only one from that game that I'm not a fan of. And that and Stryker. I think Stryker looked too... I don't even think his design is bad, I just think it's too plain for that game. That makes any sense? Okay, here we go. Now this is Sindel. God, the earrings, the... Yes, she... Those long fingernails are crazy. And the earrings, everything about this character. She looks almost like what she is. She looks like she could probably kill you if she screamed at you. The original design for Liu Kang. What was the name of this character again? Was it Minamoto Yoshitone? Or Minamoto Yoshisone, I think is what that says. I don't even know. I'm glad they went with Liu Kang. This is a lot better of a Shaolin Monk design to me, by the way, than what we saw earlier which was just completely just Shaolin Monk and nothing more, nothing less. Pretty much this is Liu Kang without the, uh, whatever the little top is that he's wearing. Just minus that, this is pretty much Liu Kang's, like, MK2 design. So I guess they just went with that for MK2 rather than the Bruce Lee look that they gave him in the first game. So yeah, this is awesome. I like this. Not a fan of that name originally, but I like this design. Like, this is cool. All right. So that's that. So those are some John Tobias character designs. Like I said, I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan and I also love these Mortal Kombat comics. It's actually been a while since I even looked at those comics. I reviewed some of them here on the channel, but just the art from them, I may actually review the comics themselves. I have quite a few in the series. I may do that at a later date, I don't know. I know I have to work on my own comic, so I'll probably be showing a lot of that pretty soon as in like within the next couple of days it's a nice change of pace to look back at this too from all of the manga that i've been recently looking at so that was kind of the leading factor in getting me to check out some of his artwork too if you couldn't tell by the way this is probably my favorite of the images that we've looked at today that one and the katana one and this rain one but that's it um I'm about to get out of here. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. If not, do what you want. Doesn't matter. I'm out. Yes, uh, there are fatalities in this game. Um, there are only a couple different circumstances where Sub Zero can do a fatality. Um, and, you know, we don't like giving away clues or hints anywhere. But uh, just for the people watching this tape, uh, in the map room in the temple, uh, Sub Zero can perform a fatality against Scorpion if you stand about an arm's length away from him and you push forward, down, and forward, uh, and then push high punch, uh, Sub-Zero will perform a fatality. So that's just between you and me. Uh, you being the people watching this tape and me being the guy sitting right here. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs>